Kutztown next on CW20. Back here, the XL Center in downtown Hartford. It's one tune-up for UConn women's basketball before the season starts for real this week. They take on the Kutztown Golden Bears, a Division II team from Pennsylvania. Alongside Meg Como, Randy Brochu, thrilled to be with you today. And so many questions. We'll get a good look at this UConn women's basketball team facing the adversity they faced. A great opportunity for Kutztown under Janet Maloof in her 28th season. And of course, Gino Oriema back for season number 38. And we are underway. We'll get a look at Lou Lopez Seneschal. The score and a great one from Fairfield after four years. The Mac Player of the Year and the transfer has a basket in the opening seconds. Kutztown 26 and 7 last year. They made their second NCAA Division II tournament appearance and first since 1996. Annie Whalen takes a three and misses. Lou Lopez Seneschal. Scored almost 1,600 points at Fairfield. Inside for Aaliyah Edwards for the basket. Edwards down low. Zara Zerman for Abby Hearn, taking on Aaliyah Edwards. And a basket here for Kutztown on the backdoor cut. Beautiful find to Annie Wayland, the senior, who averaged just under five points a game last year with the land. Terrific movement there offensively by Kutztown. Dorka Juhas inside, and of course, out injured down the stretch in the NCAA tournament last year. She is healthy, coming back from that broken wrist, suffered in the Elite Eight, and they're looking for big production from yeah, her inside. They, they missed her terribly in the NCAA tournament, certainly in that national championship game, in that loss to South Carolina. Casey Ramolde a three from the wing, and fouled. Nika Mule commits the foul. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this story before. <laughs> Not surprised with the body block there by Mule, although she's going to say, wait, I'm the one who ended up on the floor. Now, Gina Oriema said that she's improved more in the last two weeks than all of last year, but they expect the typical in-your-face defense. They're going to need more from her offensively this year, but you know what you're going to get from the reigning Big East Defensive Player of the Year. And she's, you know, she is the heart and soul of this. Team. I mean, she just is all heart, all passion. And I, I love the expression, your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness. And sometimes it gets the better of, of her, but they'll take her energy and passion all day long. Ray Molde hits all three free throws. She was a great free throw shooter last year at 84%. Edwards, you see, she's got the Rip Hamilton look to start the year, thanks to some tough defense from Nika Mule in practice. She took an elbow not too long ago. Got the broken nose, now has to wear that mask. Juhas struggling on the dribble. Got rid of it. AZ Fudd, pull up Jay. Her first shot goes strong. The rebound pulled down by Kutztown, Zara Zerman. You know, this is a great opportunity for them. How excited must they be to come to the XL Center to take on one of the premier programs in the country? Yeah, and their coach, Janet Ruth, has always wanted to play with us. She's thrilled to have the opportunity, and they're not intimidated. Casey Ramolde averaging 11 and a half points a game last year. Battle underneath and pulled down by Whalen on the rebound.
Puts down with the early lead, and that's a three for Abby Hearn. Puts down with a four-point lead three minutes in. And that's the 6-2. Well, we're fascinated to watch AZ FUD this year with Lou Lopez Seneschal in the backcourt. Seneschal is great in the half court and a fascinating player again, making the leap from Fairfield in the MAC, where she led the Stags to a championship last year. As we take a look at the starting five for Kutztown. And that foul was on 15 and A three from the corner for Fudd. And an out, Mule with an offensive rebound. And she draws a foul. Two quick fouls on Whalen. That's going to force Maloof to get her off. Shannon Ramolde, sister of Casey Ramolde. They're from Philadelphia. She checks in. Edwards inside. Beautiful move with a drop step for the lay-in. What a different team UConn will be if that young lady makes moves like that all season long. Unstoppable in the low post. AZ Fudd with a foul out near half court, trying to help Nika Mule. So that's the second team foul. A steal by Mule. And a basket nice aggressive the take there by Mule. Nika Mule, who averaged just under four points a game, a great sign early. From all day, trapped in the corner. Game tied at 10, but again, it's an exhibition and so much more about this day is beyond the score. It's about how all these individuals can come together as one team to kind of overcome adversity with a, a little bit of an underdog mentality this year. Dorka Juhas, great ball movement, sinks the three, and the Huskies are on top. Nice. Three on the break there by Juhas, but it was an outstanding pass from Edwards from the low post. Juhas transferred from Ohio State, of course, and last year averaged 7.3 points a game, but the year prior, 14 and a half points a game, and they're looking for more of that kind of production from Dorka Juhas to take charge in the front court, but she can also knock it down from long range. She's got a rebound. Really good help defense there from Juhas. Fudd turns it over as she looks to distribute underneath to Edwards. Zerman taking on Mule. Offensive rebound and the putback no good for Pearson. Third try goes down for cuts down. Sydney Pearson, a six foot two center from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, with a lay in. Fudd in the corner, the three. And she rips it. What a smooth, beautiful stroke she has. UConn has got to get AZ Fudd as many shots as possible. She shot 43% from downtown last year. But again, this is her sophomore year. That's a deep one from Abby Hearn from way downtown to answer. UConn by one, almost six minutes into the game. Juhas from inside the arc knocks it down. Well, this is going to be a very different UConn team than, than I think people are used to seeing in recent years with their domination. You, you alluded to it earlier. They may be underdogs coming into many games this year. Edwards going for the steal, and it goes out of bounds. Ramolde carried it out of bounds, so it's UConn ball. We are off and running on a new college basketball season. Kutztown has come out, knocked down their shots. It's UConn by three early on. 
UConn with a three-point lead against a Kutztown team that's come out five and nine from the floor. And you know, they had that scrimmage against UMass. Closed door kind of practice, and Gino Oriema and Mika Mule both really criticized the defense. How much of what we've seen early is a, a defensive struggle for UConn? How much of it is cuts down just coming out well, and yeah, living up to the moment? It's a little bit of both, I think. I think UConn will continue. They've gotten better the last several practices this week. You know, and Kutztown is a, a very well-coached team. Janet Maloof, Maloof is a tremendous coach. And well, like, if UConn can get going offensively yeah. like they did there, with AZ Flood getting an open look, everything will be easier. You know, they score, and then they can get into a full-court press and make things a little bit more difficult for Kutztown. And again, one of the fascinating things we're watching with AZ Fudge, she was so good at the catch and shoot three, but she's more than just a jump shooter. She really grinded out through a foot injury last year and didn't feel like she could be at her very best. She feels fully healthy. And here we're talking about injuries. She's healthy and can create. They got to get it off here with five on the shot clock. Baby jump shot, no good. Casey Ramolde. Mule. Looking to go coast to coast, and she is fouled near the free throw line. Tremendous recognition there by Mule in the open floor that the defense wasn't set, and she could take it right to the hoop. Arcuri picks up the foul. Mule to the free throw line. Aubrey Griffin checking in for the Huskies. And again, that's another fascinating storyline. She missed all of last year, but can jump out of the gym, supremely athletic. They love how she shoots the ball, too. Gina Oriama wants to see her shoot more and show more confidence yeah, in her three-point exactly. ability. Exactly. You know, previously she was more of a defensive player and offensively get rebounds. Speaking of defense, Mule with the steal can't finish. Offensive rebound, Griffin. Here's her three. Offensive rebound, Juhas for the putback. And that's the story this year for Aubrey Griffin. She's got to shoot the ball when she's open. Her freshman year, that was not the case. In the 2021 season, she averaged 6.2 points a game. That corner three, no good for Ramolde. Seneschal off the mark. Offensive rebound. Aubrey Griffin, that's what she could do, but then they turn it over. Mule getting back, avoids the foul, and gets the stop on the drive by Shannon Ramolde. Remarkably avoided that foul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she fouled her. They just, they just didn't call. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's how Nika Mule wants to see it called. She never Absolutely. thinks she commits the foul. She wants to see more of a hard-nosed style of play from everybody, including the officials. I think she stepped out of bounds. Yes. Bella Arcuri, a sophomore. This roster for Kutztown, they all come from either Pennsylvania or Delaware or New Jersey, so they stay close to home for the Kutztown Golden Bears. Lou Lopez sent a shawl from the corner for three, and she can score in so many ways. She can, and what made it easier that time was a fabulous screen set by AZ Flood. They describe her as having such a great positive energy she brings to the team and a consistent effort all the time, consistent positive energy. That's tough to do, and Gina Oriam is very excited that she's going to use her fifth year here in stores. There she is for three. And she nails it. What a stroke. My you girl know, is not shy. She is very confident, supremely confident. And think about it, she comes from a Fairfield program where they ran the whole offense through her for four years. So she's used to having plays drawn up for her. She's not going to have that kind of pressure, but they know they can get a basket from her on cue. And it's an adjustment, having to be the number one option on offense to being an option here at UConn. Yeah, and she's, you know, she welcomes not having everything run through her. But I tell you, it means a lot to Gino Oriama and this team to have an offensive weapon such as Lopez Seneschal. Here we go, Ayanna Patterson, the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, who fans are going to 
love watching what she can do. Athletically, Gina Oriema says there's nobody on the team that can do what she can. The question, of course, in development for all freshmen, how does it translate to basketball? We got our first look at Patterson. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch her play, watch her develop. It's not easy to come in here as a freshman post player. The game is stronger and bigger and faster. But they love what they've seen from her so far. And obviously the big offseason story is the injury to Paige Beckers. But with Ice Brady, also a highly touted freshman, expected to contribute in the front court this year. More playing time is expected for Patterson. More is going to be needed from her. Yeah, and there, yeah. and there she created the jump ball. Alternating possession gives it to Kutztown. She's a great block, a shot blocker, great rebounder. And she can dunk. That's what's <laughs> pinned on her Twitter at the top. Very impressive athlete who was a great track star before really settling into the game of basketball. Naya Pulliam knocks down the straightaway three. Great screen set to open Pulliam for that shot. UConn starting to run away with it here in the final 20 seconds of the first. The take by Aubrey Griffin, and it's an offensive foul. Got to give our Curie a lot of credit for stepping in and taking that charge. I love the aggressiveness, though, of Aubrey Griffin. Gina Oroyama says she is jumping out of her skin to get back out there. And you can appreciate it. Somebody who plays with the passion she does not being able to play last year. It's got to be great just yeah, to be there. And a play such as that, that tells you that she has put the injuries, both ankle and back, out of her mind, aggressively goes to the basket. May not have been as easy for her mother to watch, but. Ramolde the pull up at the end of the quarter. 10 minutes in, UConn 31 cuts down 18. And Meg, like you said, there's some uh, very positive signs, especially from Aubrey Griffin putting those injuries behind her. We saw on display in the first 10 minutes. I, I'm impressed they scored 31 points. Like that. Yeah. Cuts down came out shooting well. UConn starts to pull away. Back with a second quarter from Hartford. Back in Hartford, UConn puts up 31 points in the first quarter, led by Lou Lopez Seneschal, who shows off the new weapons at Gino Oriema's disposal. Well, you know, we've heard a lot about what they've lost due to injury, but they've acquired a young lady for her fifth year here from Fairfield. She can score in so many different ways. She can get to the basket. She can knock down the three. You gotta give AZ Fudd a lot of credit. Not only did she set a great screen for her on one of her threes, there's a nice kick to draw the defensive pressure away to open up Lopez Seneschal. She's a welcome addition on the offensive end for sure. Eight points on three of five shooting, including two of four from downtown with a couple of assists and a couple of rebounds to stuff the stat sheet in the first quarter for Lou Lopez Seneschal. Griffin feeding it inside for Patterson. The take, but a miss. She fights for that offensive rebound. What a motor. Another kick out, Lou Lopez Seneschal for three. Offensive rebound, Aubrey Griffin. AZ Fudd driving the basket, kicking baseline underneath for Patterson. Great and dish, finish. yeah, great dish by Fudd to find Patterson open for her first collegiate points. Good to see Fudd with that explosive drive of the baseline too. Yeah, so much more than just a three-point shooter, AZ Fudd. Leah Edwards going for the steal, knocked it out of bounds. She won gold and was MVP of the 2022 Global Jam U23 tournament for Team Canada from Kingston, Ontario. Such an international flavor to this UConn team this year. Offensive foul on Kutztown. Naya Pulliam, a little too aggressive down there. She looked very confused with the call. Patterson, it's like Seneschal running point. They double her inside Patterson, Fudd wide open. And a rare miss on an open look from three. She put on a show in first night, 
now she gets to try to put the same kind of show on. Difference is she's got some jerseys in her yeah, face today. Yeah, a little defense, but yeah, the wide open shot, a nice pass from Griffin to the open thud. She doesn't miss many, that's for sure. Nice hand for Lou Lopez Seneschal as Mule replaces her. This is where Mule's got to play smart. She's already got two fouls. Fought all over Zerman defensively. And forces a turnover. That's a great example of the type of defense that AZ Fudd can play, forcing that five second violation. She is a tremendous defensive player, and I don't think she gets enough recognition for it. Well, the hype, of course, is very high on AZ Fudd of being one of those generational talents, top recruit. Of course, they talk about her first and foremost as a jump shooter, but trying to be that complete player and a great defensive player in her quest to be one of the best in the game this year. Block from Ayanna Patterson on the three ball, and she goes coast to coast. And learn a trip to the line. That showed you her athleticism, blocking the shot and then leading the break. Lost the handle as she went up the first time, but was persistent and stayed with it and got herself fouled. We talked about her being a track star, but she was actually very well versed in many sports. She loved soccer, cheerleading, dance, cross country. At 13 years old, and we saw it kind of on display there going coast to coast, she was second in the 100 meters at the USATF Indiana Association Junior Olympics. 12.69 was her time. She is not only a great forward, but she can get down the floor really fast. Yeah, she's just an incredible athlete. Can do so many things exceptionally well. 34-18 UConn here in the second. Nika Mule defending Zerman. Right in her face, but again, avoiding a whistle. Patterson looking to cause the turnover. She hits the deck, ties it up. How about that and hustle? Fans appreciate that effort. Yeah, great hustle diving on the floor by Patterson. Same could be said for Kutztown. Hearn jumped on the floor as well. Patterson forces the tie up. Arrow does stay with the Golden Bears. And Pullman inbounds. Mule going for the steal. Ends up on the bench. Right, right by Ice Brady. A dangerous play, place for Brady to be yeah. standing with the knee brace there. Right next to Caroline Ducharme, who's also unavailable today for the preseason exhibition. A little floater, great touch by Zara Zerman. Big smile on her face running back. Oh. Happy that thing got to go. Ayanna Patterson driving. And she did shuffle her feet. Hey, that's what exhibitions are for. Get the feel for real game action and try to yeah, clean it up for Thursday night. Yeah, you know, that's a night. very typical freshman, unsure kind of a play. Naya Pulliam running point here for the Kutztown Golden Bears. Got a couple famous alum from professional sports, including the great wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, Andre Reed. The three ball is no good for Pulliam. Griffin the rebound, looking to push the floor. Mule, quick dish underneath to Aaliyah Edwards, an explosive move to the basket for Edwards for the lay-in. Just love the aggressiveness of Edwards, getting the ball about 10 feet from the basket, facing up and driving. Nice steal. To Griffin! Aubrey Griffin with a lay-in after Mule forced the turnover. UConn will be able to press in spurts here. The nice quick hands by Mule. 
The finish by Griffin. They'll be able to wreak some havoc defensively. Good pass by Whalen up against the double. Olivia Smellis laid it up. No good, but she follows the shot. Smellis, a freshman at six foot one from Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. UConn with a 16 point lead. Lou Lopez Seneschal blows right by the defender out at the top of the key, and it's an easy lay in. She's into double figures. Abby Hearn steps back and is short on the three. Edwards the rebound. Fast break for UConn. Mule over the back. No look to Patterson. Nice feed by Nika Mule. And again, you know, she averaged under four points a game last year. They're going to need her to be more than a great defender. How about this look? Well, and you saw her, you know, she was driving through the lane away from where Patterson was because she knew she wanted to get it to her. Defense committed to the ball, the nice pass. Patterson got herself fouled and got to the line. Nika did have 87 assists last year, only turned it over 51 times, so she is a good ball handler, of course. Now in her junior year, certainly the vocal leader of this team. Trying to be a force in the offensive half court, too, and in that case, on the fast break. Patterson from the free throw line, one of two. Great minutes there for the freshmen. The crowd showing their appreciation. A little welcome to Connecticut from the UConn faithful here in Hartford today for the freshman Ayanna Patterson. Remolde threw it away. We're past the five minute mark of the second and UConn continues to pull away. It's the Huskies over the Golden Bears of Kutztown, 41 to 22 here at the XL Center. The Fox 61 Weather Watch is always on, helping you prepare and keeping you safe. Trust Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank and the Fox 61 Weather Watch team on air on the Fox 61 News app and on Fox 61 Plus. Certainly doesn't feel like basketball weather. More of a nice day to take a break, perhaps from raking leaves and watching some exhibition basketball between UConn and Kutztown. Yeah, I didn't expect to have humidity affect my game hair. <laughs> During basketball season. You're game ready, Meg. That three is short from Whalen, but an offensive rebound for Kutztown by Hearn. Her jump shot long, Yule the rebound. UConn going fast. Handles from Nika into the corner. Edwards inside for Dorka Juhas, who did not see any game action over the summer. Again, coming back from the injury suffered in the NCAA tournament. So today is really a, a, a true return for Dorka Juhas back off the bench here coming out of the timeout. Boy, she is such a presence for this team. Big, strong presence in the lane, but can shoot the three. Is a great passer. She does so many little things as well. There she is inside against the double team. Smart double team inside by Kutztown. You know, this is her second year here at UConn after three at Ohio State. She was a great scorer for the Buckeyes in the Big Ten. But with a year under her belt here in stores, Gina Orima says she looks more comfortable and thinks that she could be as high as a top five pick in the WNBA oh, draft. Oh, no question about it. This program certainly gets players ready for the next level. Taking it on the double team again. Seneschal knocks down the straightaway three. She is racking them up. 13 points for Lou Lopez Seneschal in her Huskies debut. She's got a knack to getting to the open spot. And early in her UConn career here, they are finding her with the ball. Edwards 
disrupting things. And she forces the turnover. It goes off the foot of her and last touch by Kutztown. A tremendous hustle yet again from Aaliyah Edwards, getting things going on the defensive end with the active hands. The sixth woman of the year and an all freshman selection of the Big East back in the 2021 20, campaign where she averaged 10.7 points a game. Last year, the production just under eight points a game. Seneschal, too strong on the three. Once again, no hesitation taking it though. Ramolde, Casey Ramolde, slips inside, too strong off the window. Aliyah Edwards with another rebound. Mule inside to Dorka Juhas. Drop step in a basket. Great for Dorka Juhas. Yeah, great recognition by Mule to know that Juhas had her player pinned underneath her down low in the lane. Ramolde taking on Fudd. She stayed with her. Looked like Ramolde wanted to step back and take the jump shot, but really well defended by Fudd, who's got it in the corner in the front court. AZ Fudd, corner three, off the money. Seneschal hawks it down and gets it inside to Dorka Juhas to get Dorka a trip to the line. Yukon moving well without the basketball. Phenomenal cut there from Juhas. The nice find from Lopez Seneschal. Looking over at the bench and looks like player coach, so to speak. Paige Becker's really like that effort. Dorka Juhas was 61% from the free throw line last year. That's one area she could really help herself. She goes one of two. Patterson back in for Juhas. Solid minutes from Dorka there. With 2.20 to go in the half. UConn up big. 25-point lead for the Huskies. Again, that's certainly expected, but secondary to just getting a look and getting a feel of game action for everybody out there. Ayanna Patterson ties up Noel Baxter. Yeah, forced oh. the jump ball. Cuts down possession yet again. It feels like they get every possession arrow. Two on the shot clock. Fudd looking to force the violation, and she does. Ayanna Patterson inbound. Nikki Mule calling out the plays. They get it to the block for Patterson and a kick out for Seneschal. A three. Edwards crashing. And Naya Pulliam tried to box her out, but is the last to touch. UConn got lucky, no foul called there on Edwards over the back. She did a nice job avoiding it. Baseline inbounds from Nika Mule. Patterson sets the screen. Mule in the corner, looking for help. She finds Fudd. AZ Fudd takes on two. Nika Mule, corner three. No good, offensive rebound, AZ Fudd. And the kick out. Seneschal, one more pass to Patterson. They take away the baseline inside of Edwards. And she draws contact. And Aaliyah Edwards goes to the line. UConn looks really good early in this game with their inside out combinations. There have been a couple awkward plays where, you know, the, right before this foul was called, Aaliyah Edwards cut into the lane while Patterson was trying to, to dribble drive on the baseline. Little things like that. That's just time and, and just working through and getting game action to figure out when to and when not to. Aaliyah Edwards going two for two from the line. 
He had some strong performances down the stretch last year in the Stanford game, nine points and eight rebounds in the Epic NC State game, 10 points. Nearly a double-double against Indiana. Down to the final minute of the first half. Casey Raymolde with a pass to the block for Sidney Patterson, who sinks it. UConn looking to get halfway to 100 here in the final minute of the first half. Seneshaw with a big reason why. And she's got two more. The mid-range jump shot. She's hitting threes. She's cutting to the basket. And she shows off the pull-up jump shot. She's everything is advertised. She can score from anywhere. Nice defensive pressure there by UConn. Force the ball off of Kutztown. UConn will get another look offensively here with 30 seconds to go. 51-24, Lopez Seneschal with 15 points to lead them on 6 of 11 shooting for the Huskies. Shot clock off. Mule. They get the ball to Fudd. AZ Fudd into the paint. One more pass, Seneschal cuts to the hoop. And the foul! What a half by Lou Lopez Seneschal. She'll go to the line for a three-point play and a chance to put up 18 in the first half. That's a seasoned, savvy basketball player. The great cut. See, that moving without the basketball offensively for UConn, all those maroon jerseys were running around. No one could follow the ball. Nice job attacking the glass and getting fouled. She's got 18, and you get a feeling that this year you're going to hear Lou a whole lot at the <laughs> XL Center and Gample Pavilion. What a half from Lou Lopez Seneschal. UConn goes in a halftime with a 30-point lead over Kutztown, and the transfer from Fairfield led the way for Connecticut. 54-24, UConn has the lead. Lou Lopez Seneschal making noise in her debut with UConn. You know, we talked so much about what they've got here in the, in the first half. There's a look at Ice Brady, who dislocated her kneecap a couple weeks ago, had surgery, lost for the year. We know Paige Beckers tore her ACL. In August, she's done for the season. So it, Gino Ariana said last week at practice, if these two, be, these two kids were playing, we would be an unbelievable basketball team. Well, they don't have them, but they've got to work with what they have. In that first 20 minutes, I thought this team looked pretty good. To put up 54 points, I'm impressed. It's been a long time since UConn could say they've got a bit of an underdog mentality, but given the tough breaks for those two players that we just saw and kind of uh, comeback mentalities from a few of the young ladies who will be on the floor and look through this year. Well, That's you, the case. Yeah, and you look at these kids on the screen right now, This is it's on them. Like, there, there's no Paige Beckers isn't going to come back at the end of the season to kind of help take them to the promised land. It's on them, and as a result, they've all changed their mentality, and they've had to mature and grow up in a way that they wouldn't have had to do had those other two kids been healthy. AZ Fudd takes the first shot of the second half. Dorka Juhas the steal. The left hand lay in for Dorka. And it's a little short, but creating havoc. To forcing Sydney Pearson into a turnover. And she earns a trip to the line. A savvy steal there by Juhas. Her entire team had run back on defense, didn't even know that she had stolen the ball. And Juhas hits her first free throw, which will allow those who have made their way into the XL Center to have a seat to begin the second half. Good crowd for an exhibition game. Dorka goes two for two from the line. Up to a 55-24 UConn lead. Cuts down today, the Northeastern Thursday, and then it gets significantly harder. This is a difficult schedule for UConn picks sixth in the preseason AP poll. 
And they will get a top six showdown with Texas this month. Number three, Texas. Yuhas, two more as she grabs the miss from Fudd. Torque is up to 16 points. Casey Raimolde. Yuhas gets out to the shooter, but a little late, and Sydney Pearson sinks the jump shot. They slip it inside for Seneschal, and it doesn't roll for her. Yeah, rare miss that we've seen from Lopez Seneschal. Whalen picks up her dribble. Casey Raimolde against Nika Mule. Mule in her face forces the turnover on the steal by Edwards, who takes it the length for the lay-in. Nice anticipation by Aaliyah Edwards, but it's the pressure on the ball that also helped to create that turnover. From the wing, a catch and shoot three missed by Abby Hearn. Lou Lopez, Seneschal, the rebound. Nika Mule steps on the gas. Good, and the foul. What a take by Mule. Nika Mule averaging under four points a game last year, but the explosive couple of steps to the basket earns her an in one opportunity. Now, Gina Oriama said that other teams would leave her to go double someone else. So her working on her offensive game, she's de worked on developing a free throw line jumper and also on display there. That take to the basket will make everybody else better. Not just her, but everybody else. Yeah, you've got to be someone that the defense has got to respect. Seneschal the rebound. Cross-court pass, Edwards to Mule. Edwards into the teeth of the D, picks up a double. Nice pass inside by Seneschal to Juhas. That was a great lead pass. Lopez Seneschal saw that play developing even before D Dorka Juhas made the cut. That was a tremendous pass. Watching Lou Lopez Seneschal and Dorka Juhas could be a good combo. Don't you feel this year the inside-outside game? And you know, UConn's putting out that great material on social media, the standard, the, the show focusing on UConn women's basketball. The most recent episode was about how many international players are on this roster. Dorka Juhas saying, let's go. Find, <laughs> find more international talent. And her teammate Lou Lopez Seneschal this year, born in Mexico, grew up in France, and played in Ireland. Great hustle again, getting on the floor, Aaliyah Edwards. And she gets a tie up. Yeah, both teams getting down on the floor. Want the ball. Well, again, it's a great opportunity for Kutztown. And again, forget about the score. It's an opportunity for them to build on a terrific year last year. Again, they made their second NCAA tournament appearance, first since 1996. 26 wins last year for head coach Janet Maloof, who goes way back with Chris Daly. Lopez Seneschal the steal. Nika Mule for AZ Fudd. Catch and fire for three, and she rips it. And that shot went in, in my mind, because on the opposite side, Nika Mule could have taken the three, but instead dribble penetrated and then kicked it out to Fudd. Nice unselfish play by Mule. Gets UConn the open three. From the free throw line, Abby Hearn steps back and misses. Ooh, Lopez Seneschal, another rebound. Fudd gonna keep on shooting, and she nails another. Same exact spot on the floor as the previous three. She's she in just, rhythm it, now. She just, it makes, she just makes it look so easy. A deep one, 
is good for Annie Whalen. Whalen earning the start today. Came off the bench 29 times last year. Now a senior from Ivy Lynn, PA. Shot 31% from downtown, and that was a deep three for Whalen. Mule gets fouled as Hearn try to work her way through the pick. And Hearn is trying to say, I was fouled. You're calling the foul on me? So Hearn heads off. Pulliam replaces her, and Mule inbounds from the baseline to Edwards. Set play, and Aaliyah Edwards with a lay-in. Nicely executed under out of bounds play there by UConn. Up to a 72 29 lead for Connecticut. Annie Whalen stepping back on AZ Fudd and sinking a long two. Mule up the floor for Fudd. Kick out, set a shawl of three. She's got a good arc to her three ball. She brought she? some rain down with that one. It's a rare thing around here. We've been talking about that beautiful weather here in Connecticut. It's the only rain in the forecast. Mule. Fudd. Another three for AZ Fudd. Three for her last three. Molde with Fudd working her way through. The screen set by Pearson going up against Edwards. Another deep three for Whalen. That one is short. Mule up the floor to Seneschal in transition. Beautiful basket by Connecticut. And it starts with Nika Mule. But it's finished by Lou Lopez Seneschal. 77-31 Huskies. Off the window, no good for Rimolde. Juhas defending her. Dorka dead on. Downtown and another three for UConn. That's how UConn has come out in the beginning of this third quarter. And they have put on an offensive clinic. 80 on the board for the Huskies. Up by 49 on Kutztown. Edwards the rebound off the wild miss by Whalen. Nika. Going into the half court set. Around the Edwards screen. Leah Edwards from the free throw line. You know, how different this team will be offensively and how much more potent if Aaliyah Edwards can knock down that 15, 17 footer consistently. Edwards goes up for the rebound off the three ball miss from the corner by Naya Pulliam. Mule to Juhas and this one should be going back to Kutz down as the Huskies are unable to connect between Nika Mule and Dorka Juhas, but Connecticut's offense looking really strong here in the third quarter. They're knocking them down from everywhere. Easy Fudd was quiet in that first half. You can't expect her to be quiet for too long. AZ Fudd and the Huskies up big on Kutz down in this exhibition. AZ Fudd and the Yukon Huskies with a lot to like here in the third quarter. Fudd, three for her last three and up to 15 points on the day. Well, you know, I said it before, you're not going to keep her quiet for long, right? And, and you could tell in that first half, the shots were there. She just didn't quite feel in a rhythm. Well, she's gotten herself into a rhythm now, and it's it's truly a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. We've heard so much about that jump shot from her coming in, and she certainly... Showed it off last year, shooting 43%. Steph Curry comparing her jump shot to Ray Allen's high praise, and it really is. 
incredible to watch. It's so smooth. Looking for the lay-in this time. All of her points have come from behind the arc. She misses that one at the rim. Remolde for Pulliam. Ayanna Patterson getting out on the ball with 15 to shoot. Remolde slipping inside FUD and Seneschal comes away with it. Good team defense there by UConn to force that turnover. Aubrey Griffin goes up strong to the rack and earns free throws. Well, Aubrey Griffin coming back from injury last year and She's had the experience of having to work her way back from an injury in high school when she tore her ACL. Gina Oriema thinks that certainly had to help in the process of yeah, rehabbing mentally, and coming yeah, back. for sure. Of course, her brother AJ, the star at Duke and picked by the Atlanta Hawks in the NBA draft this year, the 16th overall pick. Brother Allen was a great player at Illinois and Syracuse, and, and Dad Adrian played nine NBA seasons and is an assistant coach with the Toronto Raptors. So a great basketball family from Ossining, New York. And her mother, a, a phenomenal track athlete at Seton Hall. A good, a good call there, offensive foul. On yeah. Ramolda, you could see her right arm. Watch when she drives here. Edwards gets into position, and that right arm, kind of tough to see from that angle, but her right arm initiated that contact. And she even said it, you saw in that replay, she said, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. You got me. Yeah, Edwards did the, she got herself there with good footwork, dramatized it a little bit with the, with the aggressive fall down to the ground, but she sold it and got it. This ends up with Edwards. Fudd for three. It's good. Her sixth three-pointer of the day. And, and, and the problem there, Patterson just fell because she slipped on sweat on the floor. And, and that could have, <laughs> with UConn's luck that they've had this year I with know. crazy injuries. So the shot goes up and in. Let's see if we can see. He saw her. Fuzz reaction. <laughs> yeah, AZ's laughing, Ayana's laughing. You know who's not laughing? Gino's not laughing. His heart just stopped, I think. Totally. Because Edwards went down, falling over Patterson, who slipped on the body sweat on the floor. Thankfully, nobody got hurt, and we can laugh at it. Sophia Coleman in the game and vacated the spot as Layla Hurley also enters a freshman and throws it away. I think she threw it to Ramolde, who was walking down the bench to get water. <laughs> she had exited the game. Oh, an explosive drive to the hoop for Aubrey Griffin for the lay-in. I mean, that's a glimpse at the, the incredible athleticism of Aubrey Griffin. We haven't had the luxury of watching it for a year. Lou Lopez Seneschal with a steal. Up the floor, AZ inside, Edwards. Count the basket and the foul. UConn has just stepped it into high gear. Just getting the ball up the floor there. Lopez Seneschal, the great pass to Fudd. Perfect pass inside to Edwards. And Kutztown just wasn't set defensively and committed the foul. Leah Edwards in her junior year from Kingston, Ontario in Canada. She represented the Canadian Olympic team in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics as the youngest player on Team Canada. Here in her junior year at UConn now and one of the veterans that they'll be looking to. From the corner, a rattle in three for Naya Pulliam. That was a great shot by Pulliam. Edwards had her hand right in the face. Not much more you can do to defend that. Fight underneath, great play by Edwards. Kind of volleying it to herself. 
And, and, yeah, terrific court awareness there by Edwards. Seneschal the drive in the basket for Lou Lopez Seneschal. And that's just the savviness of a veteran to just use a half a step to get by the defender. She's up to 22 in the game, nine for 16 from the floor, five rebounds, two assists. She's doing a little bit of everything. And she protected the ball so well with her body. UConn creeping towards 100, 93-34 as we go to the fourth. Well, certainly a lot to like about that third quarter for the UConn offense. 14 of 20 from the floor, 70% the third quarter shooting for UConn, and they looked in sync. Boy, if there were jitters, they got out of the way in the first half, and they looked like the UConn Huskies in the third. Yeah, they really did. I, I just love the energy, the execution. They went hard, and, and one of the keys, and I think Lopez Seneschal has kind of brought this to the team with her maturity and experience. They move so well without the basketball. They're always moving and cutting, and that's really difficult for any team to defend. To start the fourth, inbounded by Aubrey Griffin. And into the game, Amari DeBerry for UConn. AZ Fudd knocks down another three to start the fourth. Her we seventh. You just can't give her that much room. She's seven for 12 from behind the arc. Seven of 14 in the game from the floor overall. You so can see UConn in the zone here. They've changed it up defensively. No good from Sophia Coleman. To Barry getting down the floor. And she's got the ball in the block. No look past the FUD. Cutting, and the left hand lay in is good. How about that pass from DeBerry, who just entered the game? Tremendous bounce pass to the cutting FUD. Mari DeBerry appeared in 16 games last year, including in the national championship. Gina Oriyama loves her still. The effort, the speed, and the mental side, all things she's worked on this summer. They're going to need her to lengthen the bench. What work underneath by Patterson. She will not give up on the play despite a few misses underneath. No lack of effort, though. Yeah, well, great effort. But you know what? That's a freshman trying to play in her first college game. Exhibition or not, these kids are, just, are still bigger than most she's faced in high school. Zerman off the money. Offensive rebound, Hearn. DeBerry forces the turnover. She hits the deck, but it... Rolls to AZ Fudd. Griffin also got a hand on it. Let's see how they could utilize DeBerry in the offense here. Backdoor cup for Seneschal. She turns it over. Zerman intercepts. Up the floor. And a fast break basket for Naya Pulliam. Now 98-36 UConn. Looking to hit triple digits, but a travel by Easy Fudd. And we're going to see Inesh Betancourt enter the game for UConn. The freshman from Portugal, a late addition. She came to UConn after Paige Becker's injury, a true point guard who could pass or make shots. And we have a player down for UConn. It looks like it's a cramp. Lou Lopez Seneschal stretching it out. Hobbling off and still smiling. <laughs> you got to praying about. it's a cramp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she doesn't seem terribly concerned. And still showing positive energy coming off banged up. Speaks to the energy she brings to this team this year. Gina Oriama said he would have loved to have had her for more than just the one year, but they're certainly glad to have that positive energy with them this year in a year where they really need it. Well, yeah, thank God she's here, but also it's a sin in a way that she and Paige Beckers won't get to play together. I know. Imagine. 
All right, Inesh Betancourt. Went through a lot to get here. She had never stepped foot in the United States till her first day at stores, which was the first day of class. She was headed to a junior college that won the national championship last year, Northwest Florida. And Fudd nails it to put UConn over the 100 point mark. 101 to 36 Huskies. I wouldn't have expected 100 points from this team today, and certainly not with seven minutes to play in the game. That's an air ball for Sophia Coleman. Fudd now with eight three-pointers and 13 attempts and five assists as well. And 26 points today for AZ Fudd. Nine out of 16 overall from the floor. Very looking to bounce it Griffin's way and a foul whistled against Kutztown. When news breaks in Connecticut, Fox 61 News provides you with the facts to keep you informed and safe. Breaking news can happen at any time, and when it does, you can trust Fox 61 News, Connecticut's breaking news station. With Meg Colmo, Randy Brochu, thrilled to be with you today for this exhibition for the Yukon Huskies, getting ready for their season, which begins Thursday against Northeastern. It's such a fun time of year, Meg, especially for UConn fans. Not just the basketball, the football had the big win and five wins for UConn talking about bowl eligibility, the win against UMass. Both hockey teams had a huge weekend. The UConn men's team, number eight in the nation in climbing after a sweep of Maine. And of it's course, a, yeah, it's a great time to be a Husky, that's for sure. Noel Baxter with a three-pointer. The fall is leading into winter, which is a really fun time around UConn. DeBerry, too strong on her jump shot. Patterson out of nowhere grabs the rebound and makes a strong move to the basket for the lay-in. You can already see she's gained some confidence from some of her earlier attempts at the basket. They are so strong. Steal for DeBerry. Betancourt for Fudd, looking for another three, and she's got it. How about nine three-pointers today for AZ Fudd? Sky-high confidence right now for AZ Fudd. 106 to 39, UConn. Shannon Ramolde takes a three. This is where things get fun. Fudd looking for another, and that spins out. This feels like first night right now for Easy Fudd. They're like layups for Fudd. And she's going to go to the bench with 29 points. 10 for 19 from the floor, 9 for 16 from downtown. A rebound and five assists as well. I think she's ready. <laughs> I would think so. Baxter for three. Griffin, that's a great sign. Yeah, floating through the air for mm -hmm. that rebound. Well, a really good defense there to steal the ball there from Olivia Smellis, but, you know, DeBerry's got to go to the basketball. That was a perfect example of the defense stepping through and the offensive player not stepping to the ball. Instead, she just kind of grabbed Smellis and tossed her instead of the it ball. Did, it did keep them from getting a fast break. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose. 4.42 to go in this one. UConn up big. One news team weeknights on the Fox 61 News at six. A steal by Patterson for the lay-in as she forces it and again just gets down the floor in a hurry. Just looking so much more confident here in the second half. And she attempted a dunk in a high school game once that drew oohs and ahs, of course. She got above the rim, but just didn't quite throw it down. Thought maybe for a moment there, <laughs> she broke away. 
but thought better of it. And hey, if she's going to try that here, she better wait a little while. <laughs> yeah. And whatever she does do it, you just got to make sure you flush it. Yep. Oh, Aubrey Griffin handles on the handoff from DeBerry, but it doesn't go down for her. Her athleticism is just a beautiful thing to watch. Baxter from deep. Mule the rebound off the miss. And Nika gets fouled. Another one who likes to sell the fact that she's getting fouled. <laughs> a passion coming through on the defensive end. You know it. Anyway, with the ball, getting fouled, whatever it is. And Gino Oriema and his media availability this week said, he asked Nika, who's the voice of this team? So, me, you know, who does everybody listen to? Me, he goes, good, well, listen to yourself. <laughs> and kind of challenged her to become that complete player because they know what she can do defensively. And certainly been some great signs today from Nika Mule. Distributing the ball. Hey, nice play by Amari DeBerry forcing it. Betancourt for Griffin in the front court. They triple down on her, and she tosses it to Skyler West, who has the steal. Good ball movement here by Kutzdown to open up a three for Layla Hurley. Mule turns it over. Remolde up against Griffin. Aubrey Griffin. Just gets down the floor, beats her to the spot, takes away the space. Yeah, just a phenomenal defensive play by Aubrey Griffin. She and made it look easy. She did, and a smart play to not commit the foul. Just put her hands up and block the shot. Patterson, the take. It doesn't go for her. Ramolde. West forced it into the middle. Mule the steal up to Betancourt. And she got fouled from behind by Layla Hurley. Inesh Betancourt, the first player from Portugal for UConn. Played for Portugal in the 2022 FIBA U18 Women's European Championship. They have embraced her, the late addition, knowing that uh, it really is a big transition. You never forget about starting college, but to never even have been in the United States or step foot on a campus and gets the chance to play at UConn that she didn't see coming. She's got her first points here in the exhibition on the free throw line, and it's 110 to 39 UConn. Well, it can't hurt that there's a handful of kids from other countries playing on this UConn team. A very international flair. And, and they're a really good group of kids, and they've welcomed her as, as well as the other incoming players. And, and they're having a blast. And it is, it's college. It's the best four years of your life. And if you get a chance to play basketball at a place like UConn, you've got to enjoy it. And you hit it Meg I mean it's there's pressure there's a standard here but it should be fun and when it's fun despite the pressure it's when a lot of the great ones will tell you that they're at their best yeah pressure brings a lot of great stuff out of people right I mean even people in the working world wherever you are pressure can bring the best out of you and it's fun to watch these kids thrive in this environment a lot of them come here because of that pressure. Pressure doesn't always have to be a negative thing. From the corner, that's no good. And Nika Mule comes down with a rebound, approaching the final minute here in the exhibition for UConn against Kutztown. Betancourt backdoor cut. Mule finds her for the lay-in. 112 to 39, UConn. And again, you knew that the score was likely to be lopsided, but it's all the things beyond the score that is the real story. How would Betancourt, new to the team, 
look in her first minutes. How does Griffin get up and down the floor? We just saw it on display there. A lot of people wanted to get a look at the freshman Patterson. She's had, I think, a terrific afternoon. And, and the returning players. You know, AZ Fudd knocked down nine threes here this afternoon. 20 points from Dorka Yuha, seven for eight from the floor. Yeah, this is the first we've seen Yuha since she broke her wrist. No look past Betancourt. What a look inside to Ayana Patterson for the lay-in. 114 to 39. That's likely the last basket of the day for UConn. And it was pretty. Ooh, behind the back. <laughs> Little exclamation point on this <laughs> afternoon, huh? Griffin will go to the line for free throws here. As that was the fifth foul against Kutztown. You have to really like what you saw from Aubrey Griffin today. What a pleasant sight to see Aubrey Griffin back on the floor, healthy. Yep. And, and no inhibitions whatsoever. A great kid, a phenomenal basketball player, an extraordinary athlete. One more shot here from the wing is good for Layla Hurley. And the Yukon Huskies put up 115 today in their first time together on the floor. And they are heading into the regular season. Gino Oriema and the Huskies in search of national championship number 12. It begins for real on Thursday, but they sure looked good in this exhibition today in Hartford. Yeah, it was a great chance for the rest of us to see them play, but I know Gino's happy to, to get these kids out on the floor in a game-like environment. Yeah, Kutztown's a Division II team, and the score indicates that, but you know what, they're well coached. And it was a, a great opportunity for UConn to just play against somebody else. It stinks playing against each other in practice day after day. Well, AZ Fudd leading the way, but <laughs> we saw everybody contribute today, and that's going to be the name of the game for this team this year. They don't have Paige Beckers to rely on. It's got to be a lot of everybody's efforts, and everybody contributed today. Good sign for things to come as we get ready for get to count on Thursday against Northeastern. Looking forward to watching your coverage, of course, this year, Meg, and great to work with you today here in Hartford. Thank you. Always great to work with you, Randy. This was a blast. And for our crew, Dave Kaplan, Bobby Kaplan, and Emily Valerio, Randy Brochu thanking Meg Como and all of you for joining us today as the UConn Huskies get ready for Northeastern on Thursday. Today in their exhibition, they beat Kutztown 115-42. to So long, everybody, from Hartford.